the post today, we have one of these. And to make life even better, we have two of these. I saw these on the Banggood site on special offer and it says one week delivery. So I thought, could that be true? Clearly isn't going to come from China in one week. Um, but to my amazement, it did come here. Well, it was eight days, which I suppose is pretty close to a week, isn't it? And they arrived undamaged. And the reason I bought these is because initially I was just going to buy one. And it's basically a up to 30 volts DC at up to 10 amps. And the display shows voltage current and sort of useful at times this shows overall wattage being consumed coarse voltage fine voltage coarse current fine current and a simple on off switch and an output which is standard four millimeter banana now you may be surprised to know that I actually quite like it. I know you, you're not used to me hearing hearing me say things like that, but it has exceeded my expectations. Now, the main thing is, it's not a precision piece of equipment. So, I mean, as you can see by the voltage, it's I've just adjusted that arbitrarily at 22.1 volts, but there's, it, in an ideal world, there will be one more figure on there so you can get a fine adjustment. But bearing in mind that for the sort of applications that I personally are going to use them for, largely uh, messing about with audio work, this is fine. The reason I bought two is because I wanted to have a variable output and variable current limiting. I'm going to tell you a bit about it and then we're going to have a look inside. First of all, things I don't like about it. Let's get the nasties out of the way straight away. The first thing I don't like is, these are all, I should say, fairly minor points. So don't think it's gonna be anything horrific, but this should really be red and this should be black. I know you've got the color symbols on the edge, but when you've got test leads inside it and things like that, it's hard to see. That's a minor point, but the major point for me is, if I take this off, there is no hole inside to poke a wire through. Now, for most lash-ups, that's for what, what you kind of need to use, or that's certainly what I would use. So that's a big admission for something that would cost virtually nothing to implement. Because when you've got a fairly thick wire, and I've tried this, when you try and wrap it round here, as you screw it up, it just the wire just falls out. So I'm actually going to change these for a different type that does have holes in them. But most of the time at the moment, I use a four millimeter plug now it comes complete with a double crocodile clip on one end and terminals on the other end. Now because this is quite close to the ground it means the terminals either have to stick out here and here and get in the way of the on off switch. So I've actually cut the terminals off and fitted four millimeter plugs that fit very nicely into the front. The, the leads that are supplied are not really suitable for 10 amps. They're a little bit thin and I think they're that awful aluminium with copper, if you're lucky, coating on it. Certainly when I put these four millimeter plugs on there, it was relatively hard for them to take the solder. Everything is relative. I'm sure most people would end up making whatever their lead of preference is. Now, the other thing, caught moaning about these leads, 
they've got these awful sleeves on there that when you try and open it, uh, of course it's working perfectly now, but usually when you try and open them, it spins around or this happens, it just exposes all the connections. And incidentally, these crocodile clips, there it's, it's going now. I, it keeps spinning around before you can open it. 50% of the time it's like that. So the whole lead, I would be inclined to throw in the bin and use one that you've got. I think before we go any further, should we have a look inside? Good idea, Mike. Let's do that. Removing the cover is very simple and I'm not going to film me doing it. But just so you know, they're standard Phillips head screwdriver and there are four on each side. So let's remove the cover. Now this is a basic overview of what's inside. There is a fan in here, but so far I've not managed to make the fan start up. And I have to say, it, the whole thing does run very cool. I always like to have current limiting on it. Um, it, it cuts down on the smoke and flames, um, basically. <laughs> so, so far, that's all I've used this on. And I've been dragging about up to a couple of amps from each supply. And the fan doesn't come on. And in fact, Initially, I thought the fan wasn't even working. So I unplugged the fan and applied voltage to it and there's nothing wrong with the fan. It's just that clearly it, I've not been dragging enough current, which would make sense because you, it's capable of passing 10 amps at up to 30 volts or up to 300 watts. So it, it's, it's been a long way off that sort of level. And it's got a relatively good heat sink on it already. You can see here a rather nice, quite solid piece of aluminium. It's nice to know that it's not going to be roaring away all the time because so many pieces of equipment these days have fans on them due to inadequate heat sinking and or both. And some of the fans can be really noisy. And when you've got three or four pieces of equipment on the bench, all blowing force 10 gales, um, it, it's quite distracting. Now, the heart of the unit is this transformer, which is quite sizable. You can see by my fingers, here is the main choke for the switch mode. All the capacitors on here seem OK, but they're not the sort of brand names that we, you know, they're not Panasonic or any of these sort of known better quality ones, but equally the whole thing does look rather nicely made. I can't really fault the way it's constructed. This is a second PCB mounted on the front panel, which covers the switching and the um, LED display. I have to say that the actual construction of this and the soldering in general is pretty good. Now, one thing I have noticed between these two, that one of them, the display is fractionally out. And we're talking fractionally out. The tracking of the display on the front is very good. But I've noticed here, if I can stick my finger in there, there is a, a tiniest preset pot. One of the tiniest I think I've ever seen in my life. Um, I'm hoping that that's going to be a preset to calibrate the voltage display. But that's the only preset on the board and I would imagine that would be probably what it's for. Something that I have just noticed which is a little bit annoying, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. I thought all the screws for the cabinet were the same size. Well, they are sort of, but this one, which keeps sticking to my screwdriver, is attacked. What can I say? Um, and it looks like the fact that it's got white in there. I think they are the ones that go on the that screw into the 
plastic on the front panel and all the others are a standard thread. Now something that may not be terribly obvious is that even though this is basically plus and a minus and clearly that's effectively ground if you connect them like this i.e the negative of this power supply to the positive of this power supply and you read the voltage between this negative here and this terminal here you will in fact have 60 volts well that's that's probably a bit obvious but let's just have a look nearest damn it 60 volts this also gives you the possibility of using this channel as a positive supply and this channel as a negative supply simply by doing this because if you just look at this one 30 volts exactly and it's that's positive and that's negative and that's the same if I can make contact on it but imagine if you put your negative lead into the positive here and you put your positive here you will get plus 30 volts as you can see here which is exactly what you'd expect because that lead is just jumping but if you now go on to this one with your positive lead you've got a negative voltage and that will give you the ability to run a, a balanced amplifier with, which requires a negative let's say 30 volts or it could be anything up to that and a positive 30 volts you just have to remember that the ground or the nought, the naught is the plus on this one and the negative on this one and and they must be linked obviously otherwise you it won't work that may be really obvious and that's basically what a, if you buy a complete power supply with a positive and negative supply they're not usually labeled as a negative supply but you have this ability to link them to get that now the only negative side if that's not a bit of a pun you must make sure that the voltage is adjusted before you apply the load and it does at least when you turn these when you power these down they will always if, say if I turn that off it'll take a while because there's no load on it obviously when I power that back up again it will be exactly where it was so if you're using an amplifier say that requires a plus and minus voltage don't adjust them separately because the rails will become balanced and the center point could be dangerously wrong and you, there's, there's a small possibility you could damage the amplifier so what I do is have both of them particularly as you don't want to chance pressing the on buttons at the same time I power them from a distribution board which I'm pointing to that you can't see have them switched on calibrate them separately calibrate the current separately as well so that they're both going to limit at whatever your chosen say an amp you don't want them to limit this one say at half an amp and that one at one amp because um, yeah you could I say could because it depends on the product you're setting it to so I switch them all on turn the power off on the distribution board connect the load and switch the power on and they both come on simultaneously and I've had no trouble whatsoever in using it in that format I mean in an ideal world you'd have lots of money you could buy a, a power supply that has these both together and they track the voltage and the current from one switch so you can safely start off at two volts and all and then gradually go up but this was really an afterthought on my part I just wanted 30 volts at 
up to 10 amps and that's what I got and it was only literally the day afterwards I thought hmm these are a good price they're under 100 New Zealand dollars each including shipping and and tax and all that so I thought that was pretty good well I thought I'd show you now how well or how badly depending on how you look at it the meters track this shows you 30 volts and on the meter it shows 0.1 but if we adjust the fine level it's 0.1 out as you can see if I adjust this for It's not even 0.1, it's half of 0.1, if that makes sense, but certainly as accurate as it needs to be. At five volts, it is as, as accurate as the meter is in both cases. 10 volts, and it's near as damn it's spot on, isn't it? Do one more at 20. We'll do 21 because it happens to be easy. And again, for, it's as near accurate as you'd expect. All right, we'll see how this goes now with some real life current. I'm going to use these load resistors, which is mounted on this small heat sink. Well, relatively small. These are eight ohm, or well, they're actually four ohm resistors. So we'll connect these in series and for an 8 ohm load now this does get very hot i tried this the other day when i was testing it and um, it's not something we need to leave connected for a long time this is what i was saying about the there's no holes uh, there's no holes in these so what we'll do Let's get the meter out of the way. We don't need that. We we'll use the test leads as supplied. And I'll connect these directly to the load. And we just literally clip that one on here. If I can make these bloody crocodile clips work. And here. 30 volts and we're drawing 114 watts now if I take the load off you watch the meters voltage is absolutely superb I must confess that for stabilization it really does stabilize uh, I, I, I know that's not the maximum current I know I'll put it on the 4 ohm load so we'll go from there oh nice and a lot of sparks right we're drawing i won't can't leave this long because it's um 200 and something watts on a 100 watt resistor but if i pull the load out again absolutely spot on ouch that resistor <laughs> is too hot to touch and the heat sink is red hot. Now, this is something that makes me jump every time I do it. Look. <laughs> oh, dear. I may have to go and change my underpants. <laughs> I think we'll turn the voltage down on that for a bit. But the first time I did that, I wasn't expecting it. And it really made me jump. See what I mean about these crocodile clips? They really are. Sh